Let's talk about Greg Popovich here. Um, what, 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 how, how, I mean, how is he ha- dealing with all that? I mean, I know, I mean, he's got to be out of his mind, right? Like ecstatic. It's, like, it's crazy. It's like, right? it's like when you're, it's like Al Pacino having a baby at 82. It's like you're starting all over again. Like, <laughs> Great <laughs> analogy. Great analogy. Yeah, that's, you that's know? What it feels like to me, but, but good. It's all good. Um, it's, you know, I love the fact that it's been reported. You know, he's got a three year deal waiting whenever he feels like signing it. Like, that's just such a, a pop sentence to me mm-hmm. um, because the joke's always been that there's going to be no heads up. It's just going to be a text and he's done. And then this happens and, and sort of like a new lease on life. And the fact that he has all of the, the guys from the teams that he loved the most, they're all still around and they still, I mean, most of them are part of the team. They do things with the team already. I, I think there's a renewed sense of coaching it, there was already that with jeremy sohan last year a lot of people you know i grant people didn't watch first games but he was already you could see him taking him under him you know arm and walking him off the court teaching him coaching him there's like a love there i think the fact that jeremy is a unique guy on his own pop likes that um and now we have this generational hopefully once in a lifetime type player come in yeah it's it makes the job fun and uh, I, I just think he's, it's renewed time. And I think it's like that for everybody in the building. Even PR, even Tom James, grumpy old Tom James, looks like a happy guy. So I, I think it's, uh, it's going to be fun to watch, like a different vibe altogether. Yeah, it's not just more runway maybe for him in his career if he, if he wants it, Michelle. It's, the, it's also that he will get a chance to set up shop for the Spurs <laughs> after him however he's you know however i assume he he chooses or sees fit because Wembanyama and is going to provide the dubs along with him together yeah. where in the same way where bruce arians said and obviously whatever was going on with brady that might be uh another piece of the iceberg we haven't talked about here but <laughs> no but arians saying i i wanted to go out and set things up for for my guy you know, and and how maybe Popovich will have a chance to do that. You know, I don't know who the Todd Bowles of this equation is going to be, but you know, yeah. I, I think this is a this is a chance for the Spurs to set up post Pop and have him have a role in that, which is so rare as well. It's in so our world. rare because you you know how fickle coaching is. I mean, you can be coach of the year one year, fired the next. It's a it's a it's a tough gig. Um, and it's not for the weak hearted. So I, I think it's very cool. And look, we, unless something drastic were to happen, a new ownership, what have you, and things completely change, then we know that whoever comes next is going to be thought out, will be part of the pop tree. I mean, it could be Mike Boonhole. It could be anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I do like the idea that it's, you got these three years, if you want them, to sort of set things up and, and get things in the best case scenario. And look, they're not going to come out next year and win 70 games. So for all we know, they keep being sort of near the bottom or in the mid, and you keep kind of building and growing and going forward. It's a great position to be in. Um, it's all part of his already pretty fabulous legacy, that the idea that now you will build, if this kid turns out to be everything people think he will be, you will be at the, at the ground floor of that. And, I, I mean, what else could you ask for as Coach Pop? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's like Pacino choosing who the nanny's going to be when he's 90. <laughs> you know? Yeah, be careful. That man is fertile. I mean, everyone needs to slow down. <laughs> you, got a, you got a good Popovich story you're willing to share? What's your favorite one, Michelle? My favorite thing about Pop is, like, he scolds me a lot because I, I, I tend to eat not the way he probably – like, for him, every meal is an event, right? He does not take meals for granted. Mm-hmm. He loves food. He loves wine, whatever. Whereas I'm just like, when I'm alone, I'm just going to eat cheese and crackers and call it a night. Like, it's not a big deal. So – I get scolded a lot um, hmm. by him for that. He knows how much I love New I love Pop so much because he knows how much I love New York. He's always reaching out to me. Last year was such a, um, it was such a cool experience. It was my second year, but it was my first year traveling because they had not been traveling. Right. So to be on the plane and have Pop sort of come back and throw a magazine at me and yell at me to read an article and then kind of come. I mean, the other the other crew is just like, what is going on? I was like, guys, he's giving me advice about wine. Like, I don't, don't want to hear it. And it's so awesome because – Again, this is my favorite team. It's the only team I, I cheer for and root for for decades now. Uh, it's surreal at times to sort of be like, our Pop and I, like we're hotel gym buddies. We're always in the hotel gym at the same time. Like, it's just a very surreal thing for a Spurs fan to have. And and he's not a guy that, as we all know, he's, he's prickly to a lot. So I do not take it for granted. I, I These are special times, however long they last. I'm loving it. What does he listen to when working out? What does he do? He, I think he's... He's 
kind of a chatty guy. Like he sort of talks and then he makes little snide comments because it'll be usually, you know, there are a couple of coaches that'll be in there at the same time. And uh-huh. It's that team hotel thing. Um, yeah. yeah, he's more of a chatty guy. Oh, like really? that's kind of his thing. <laughs> is he trying to get out of working out? Just is he spending time? Is that that's why I, I don't know. No, chat between he's, reps. He's definitely doing stuff. I okay. see him working. That's good. And then he's doing like little cyclings of things. And I'm like, huh, what does he do? I'll, like I'll watch a movie or something on an elliptical and he'll come and see what I'm watching. I'm like, it's not that good. It just gets me through the 30 minutes. <laughs> How great is this, Michelle? I mean, you're going to have a front row seat to Victor Wembanyama arriving for Popovich for the Spurs. I mean, this is it. Like, this is like book material. This is, this is, this is it. This is, this is, oh, you're, okay. you're at the front. I mean, today's the 20th anniversary, the anniversary of, today's the 20th anniversary of LeBron being drafted. It would be basically wow. if, if the Cavs had a, uh, a legendary coach like Popovich at the end of his championship Hall of Fame reign getting LeBron. That's the only analogy, oh. you know? It's incredible. I mean, that's, that's crazy to think about. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It's a, it's crazy to think about. It's I'm excited for the season to start. I bet. I'm nervous for Victor. I mean, there's, you know, as, as much as the feel-good vibes are here, the rest of the league and fans are like, they want to take him down, rightfully so. So it, it's going to be it's going to be a long season, but I I you know, maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm crazy, but he really seems like a chill, chill kid. Um, and if that is what we're going to get a lot of, then then he's in a great position to really sort of handle what is a very, very hot spotlight. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 